Well, then uh, let's call the meeting to order. And does anybody have any amendments to the agenda that uh, that was sent to us? All right, then as we move through the packet here, the first item uh, on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was October 20, October 19th of 2020. <laughs> I looked at that and I thought, could that possibly be right? Has it been that long? Um, and it, it's that is, that's correct. Uh, that was the last time we met. And uh, so uh, hopefully you've had a chance to look through the minutes and uh, we would uh, welcome a motion to approve the minutes uh, or to, to amend the minutes. Can we do it by voice? I move to approve the minutes. I'll say a second. Okay. Kim, can we do it by voice or do we need to have... Um... I, I think we could do it by voice. I think we're all here and it's a small enough group. I don't know if we need to individually say because you still uh, leave an opportunity to um, disagree. Okay. All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. And moving on to the next item on the agenda is uh, to hear from any citizens uh, that may have joined us today. Uh, and we do have Mara Morkin um, on the, the agenda for uh, our, our next agenda item. So is there anyone else in addition to our guest uh, today that uh, would like to be heard? I, I see no, I hear no one. So uh, then let's uh, let's move forward with a, a presentation by Mara Morkin from Creative Moorhead. And uh, we look forward to hearing what's going on with you and that organization. Um, I would say presentation is a bit of an overstatement. I thought I would just come and give you guys a little update. I know it's been more than a year since a representative from Creative Moorhead has stopped in to let you know what we're up to, um, which is, you know, we, I think the last time Sue was here, we had these really grand plans for a large event um, and COVID-19 really stomped on all of our fun. So we sort of had to shift our focus a little bit. And, and although I think the long-term goal is still to come up with an annual event that really celebrates Moorhead's creative class, we just don't know how or when that can happen. And so we've been trying to fill the need of um, connecting creatives to the community in other ways. Um, initially, right after our community went on um, a shutdown or a lockdown, uh, the idea came up that we could offer content. I don't know if you guys can think back to a year, there was this um, online content void, I think, where a lot of us initially in our sitting in our living rooms were looking for things to do. We hadn't quite learned to twiddle our own thumbs yet. Um, and so Creative Moorhead uh, reached out to Moorhead Creatives. Uh, and that is our, our term for creative. Just I want to cover that real quick is um, really very broad. If you are a baker, you're a creative. If you are a craft beer maker, you're a creative, um, along with all of the other folks that you would really expect to be um, labeled creative. We want to keep it really broad um, out of respect for all of the makers and creators that we have in Moorhead. Um, so what we did uh, initially after lockdown was have video content created by Moorhead creatives and put it online, uh, both on our website. I think we have 45-ish videos online. Um, and it's a range from um, pieces by Theater B to uh, short videos from MSUM students. Uh, there are how-to videos for uh, massage, things like that. And so the initial effort after lockdown was to really create content. And within a few months, that was no longer um, a need for, for our community. And we became a little bit uh, antibiotic trying to figure out how, how do we uh, become current or become relevant during this time. Um, and so there was a, a few months of quiet and we've picked it back up with a lot of really uh, good ideas and none of them have happened just yet. 
Um, so some of the ideas for things coming forward, I've made notes, um, would be we, we, uh, we've worked with the city, um, Steve Moore, before he left, to create a snowbank wall in Woodlawn Park that the community members at, on their own time and socially distanced could come and just, you know, the way kids like to spray paint with colored water um, to make a community art wall there. Um, we haven't had enough snow <laughs> to make that possible, so that one hasn't happened. One that we have coming up in the spring, uh, which we're almost there for this project, is to create a socially distanced public outdoor art gallery. Um, and so that is any visual artist, whether that be a maker who wants to photograph their quilt to a professional thought photographer or a graphic artist or a painter, um, and we would digitally um, print these images, I'm sorry, really large scale and just temporarily install them on uh, brick buildings downtown. And so we've worked with the Rourke, Ace Hardware, uh, the folks at the library, Megan Kruger, who's wonderful over there. Um, the building, is it not the Clink building, it's the, I forget, is it Campbell that uh, Rustica is in? The folks that own Campbell property, I believe, owns that building. And so uh, we'll be working with them to uh, create, take the images and put a really, you know, that gaudy classic uh, museum frame that you would see, you know, that's sort of silly and kitschy. Uh, we'll be printing those around each piece and installing them for the summer. They'll come right off. Um, but that we thought was a really good way to connect more head creatives, at least the visual creatives, um, with the community in a temporary uh socially distanced, fully accessible to any one um, way. So those are the kind of things that we're thinking of in the interim before we can get back to coming together as a community and celebrating the arts um, with a, I mean, the, the, the event long term is, it's, it's another enigmatic thing. We have to really figure out what the need is uh, for the community and for the artists. I know a lot of artists have studio space that they want to share and have the community visit. Um, and the community would really, sounds like what they would really like is a uh, centralized festival. So I think that we can marry those two ideas and um, really make something special that highlights our creative class. <laughs> Did I, uh, what else can I tell you? That was a bit of a monologue, sorry guys. That's okay. great. Um, some other things that we've got just for, on our website, we've started, and it's slowly, I think we have about 18. If you end up on our website, there's the videos that, of course, you can see, and then there's an about us, all of the, all of the ideas that we've got going on. But we've also tried to create a centralized location, so if you are someone looking for a creative, you can come to our website and dig through Moorhead Creative. So we've got links to their pages, um, some uh, a splash image for each artist or creative on what they have. So um, we've got Kim Jory. So it's got a beautiful picture of the staff church that she's and all the way down to other makers like Jonah Knowles makes jewelry locally. And he's, his work is in here. Um, Kevin Zepper, he's a poet. Um, so there's a photograph that he feels represents one of his poems there. We thought it would be a nice way for, if you're looking for an artist or a creative, um, how do you find them if you don't know their name? And Googling a medium is sort of a difficult way to, to connect. So we thought we could maybe be that connection between the broader community and our creative folks in Moorhead. Yeah, it's really cool. I was just looking at your website while you were talking. It's, it's um... Fantastic. Really excited about it. Thank you. You know, it was originally built by Sue Leggett and we just, um, I recently changed some things over to make it a little bit more applicable to what we're doing right now. But I think we're going to add a lot to it over time. There's a lot of um, cool ideas that I think the website can help channel um, mm -hmm. coming up. So if you have ideas, send them our way. For instance, it makes sense that perhaps the Concordia Orchestra would have a page, right? As you were saying it, I actually wrote it down. I'm like, we should be promoting this event. There are multiple places online that we could let other people know it's happening. Potentially, this is this is a place where that can happen. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential in the community with, uh, with the two colleges, for sure. 
and okay. and certainly all the the artists that are on staff uh, at both of those institutions, as well as other places around the community. Um, you know, we're people who are um, you know artists by avocation and maybe employed uh, during the day doing something else. Um, you know, still uh, could have um, could have some kind of representation there as well. So. I think the more we we know about it and the more uh, visible that the group can and will be uh, that you know the, the the more energy it will gather I think so the pandemic really sort of cooled our heels there was this uh, initial first event that happened at junkyard that was just I mean I think a few of you were there it was really well attended there was an obvious interest in a way for artists to connect with each other and to, you know, to potentially collaborate on ideas for how to connect with our community. And I mean, that my last selfie <laughs> before the pandemic was at that event because it was the, the final thing before we all went uh, our separate ways for a year. So I'm hoping that we can get that momentum going again that we that Although I'm sure it's lost by now, I think we can pick it back up. I'm almost hoping that we can capitalize on the desire for all of us to come together again. I know I miss my neighbors, so I'm hoping that when it is safe again, that um, if we can hit the ground running and come up with an event, even if it's just another mixer like the first one and not the, the festival studio crawl that we had initially been talking about, I think it will be successful and I think it will... Um, put us right back in the same place, if not a better place than we were when we first began. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and, and I think you're right about, about coming together and, and maybe just having an opportunity for artists, uh, creatives of anybody and anyone to really just connect again. And, um, you know, I think we've become so accustomed to this new lifestyle now that there will there will take it will take some time to ease back into um you know the new reality once it's over and i think it's going to have sort of an ambiguous kind of ending you know i think it'll be there's not going to be just a day where they say okay tomorrow we're all going back to normal you know go back to work in school and you know take off your masks and it's all over i mean that, right. i don't i don't think that's going to happen i think it'll just be a gradual thing as you know, I'm, I'm more, picturing people having cocktail parties, bring your proof of vaccination <laughs> kind right. of thing initially. Yeah. I got to tell you, it was a long summer, though, without um, being able to connect with, our, like, uh, we didn't go see Hartford Street Brass one time all summer. And that's one of my favorite things that happens in the summer. But it wasn't it wasn't an option, this one. And to think that we have another winter um, and that there isn't a definite end, but whatever that end is, is coming. I think we're all looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure. It's hard to plan for, though. It is. But um, I've enjoyed being part of the conversations with the Creative Moorhead uh, planning team. And Dennis is also uh, on that uh, on that uh, call usually. So um, so it's uh, that 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 is, uh, you know, energetic enough, I think, for those of us that are at least having conversations and um, and Nat, I know that you're you're um, you know you're in with your colleagues and students at Concordia as well, and and that I'm sure feeds you as it as these kinds of things feed the rest of us. So, well, thanks, Mara, for for taking the time to come and visit with us, and thanks for um, the invitation for your for your dedication to to this cause in the community. Appreciate you and. Um, and the work that you're doing among us. Thanks. Well, thank you. I'll see you guys mm -hmm. later. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next item on our agenda today is the um, sculpture walk information. And uh, Kim sent us some material here in the agenda packet. Um, I'm just uh, heading over there. Okay, Kim, you want to kind of walk us through this a little sure. bit? Sure. So at our October meeting, we had started to brainstorm what we should do um, this year with our money. Last 
Um, year we had funded the Bench and Box Art Program in partnership with Moorhead High School art students and, and faculty. Um, and so we're trying to kind of find a new focus. And so I, I just wanted to provide a little bit of information on one of the things we talked about, not to say that that's where we need to go, um, because it might be a little bit bigger project depending on which path or how we want to pursue whatever it is. Um, but there's some background information and if nothing else, talking about locations and funding sources for whatever we might want to do. So I kind of want to open it up again to see if y'all have new ideas or um, want to vote on a, on a not necessarily vote because uh, we're a small group. And I also want to make a note that uh, today would have been Carrie Winterstein and Kenyon Williams' last meetings. They both have reached their term limits. So at our February meeting, uh, we'll have some new um, commission members. Um, so I, I just wanted to kind of preface that too, that our conversation might continue as we have some new faces on our group. Thanks. Yeah, and and uh, thanks for acknowledging Kenyon and Carrie. I'm sorry that they couldn't be here with us today either, but um, uh, but uh, just for the record, I want to make sure that that we have down that um, that we acknowledge and and appreciate their service on the Arts and Culture Commission uh, for many years and uh, and their continued service as as creative people in the community. Um, and we value their opinions and their input, and and it would be great, you know, as we if we move forward with anything like this that. Uh, that they have an opportunity to, to chime in too. And I'm looking forward to some new colleagues here uh, on this commission. I think that's what's cool about, about this whole uh, process is that, um, you know, we have some new faces and new ideas every once in a while. Um, so, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. And, um, you know, I think it's exciting to, to think about. And the, since I, since I got the packet last week, I've, had some time to to ponder it as well, and now even after a, a, a hearing from Mara a few minutes ago about this, you know, sort of grassroots effort uh, for um, for an artistic presence or even more of an artistic presence in the community uh, seems to be gathering some uh, some energy that perhaps something like this could could actually be a reality and. Um, you know, obviously we'd start small and, um, you know, build from there, but um, I, I, I enjoyed looking through the, the examples and the models that you sent from other communities. And I'm familiar with Sioux Falls uh, Sculpture Walk. I have not, oh, and Bemidji, I've been to theirs as well. I've not been to Mankato uh, or seen anything in the, uh, the Northfield one, so I'm not familiar with those, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm certainly open to further conversation about how something like this might might uh, get get off the ground. And also, you know, there, there's going to be some um, concerns about funding. Uh, if we're going to do anything at all, there, there needs to be some funding behind it. And uh, so what are what are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm going to try, I'll chime in is that ideally you hope that some group will take this project on. So it will be, you know, it will be a fundraiser for some, if that's possible, so that it will continue and somebody else will just take the ball and, roll, and keep rolling with it. So that's, that would be, I think, ideal. Kind of like what they're doing in Sioux Falls, where they have a nonprofit that runs it, and um, and they have their own director and and staff board probably, and they take care of all of the all of the logistics and financing and fundraising and all of that. So yeah, I, I mean that sounds amazing. Um, not being you know very new to this and all it 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 feels a little ambitious to me but i don't know what's been tried before as far as something like that would go i'm certainly somewhat experienced as i'm sure many of you are with with 
you know, arts board fundraising, uh, grant fundraising, things like that. And, um, you know, thinking about it, looking at the funding that is potentially currently available just in the minutes there, that's, it's a relatively small amount, about 20,000, right? So I, I guess I agree that it'd be nice to not only increase the amount of available funds, but also look to the future as, as something that could be somewhat self-perpetuating. Um, so I guess speaking for myself, I'd be eager to be part of a process of looking to develop more funds um, and, and a vision. But yeah, if there's if there's a an external group in town or a group of people in town that want to come together around this project specifically, that seems like that would be a golden opportunity. And the other thing, changing the subject slightly, I've been thinking about, you know, the master plan and where and what kind of sculpture would 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 make sense and and you know as we're as the master plan is developing the the one space in the community that i think already maybe invites some thought is the the river walk area there you know by woodlawn park um and northward and, and whether you know that could be part of the vision for where where some sculpture might go Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, there are lots of possibilities, I think, you know, um, certainly, you know, the, the most visible place is that is the place where there's the most traffic on a, on a usual day, you know, the, whether it's foot traffic or car traffic. Um, and, you know, now with, with, with increased development of housing opportunities in the downtown area. Uh, really for quite a long stretch of of the downtown main main and first avenue um and southward you know even even south on eighth street um there's there's even more you know potential for people to see and interact with public art uh whether it be on a, the side of a building or you know or a sculpture um, walk and I guess until we have much more of a walkable downtown area um, you know the the idea of a, of a walkable sculpture garden is not necessarily as practical as it might be in a community like Bemidji or or Sioux Falls where you know there there's much more accessibility for people to walk well that's part of what I was thinking is depending on how much change in construction is going to happen um in the downtown area it may not make sense to put up sculpture right away but if there are spaces that would probably stay about what they currently are like um, some of the green spaces closer to the river maybe that that's where it could start mm -hmm. well you know they've got they got a grant for a new uh, bike path that will connect woodlawn to gooseberry Oh, and I chimed in and said, you know, if you could put pads there for sculptures to be placed, that would be that would be great because you better do it. Let somebody else fund it if it becomes, you know, if it's from the if the grants from the state and it can be part of that. You know, there's a pad here, pad there. The other the other thing is it, a lot of people talk about downtown, but we, you know, when I look at uh, 20th Street, you can go from 40th Avenue all the way to the high school. And that is a con almost a continuous bike path, walking path, and it's nothing but green between that path and and, uh, and the railroad. So I mean, it's you know, it's another place to walk and stroll, and and so there's other places to. to so yeah, but I, I guess the other thing I've chimed in is I've I've talked to uh, Brad Bachmeyer over at MSUM. In the art department, I, we used to teach in the same building, and um, he kind of got back to me. And he said, "You know what? He kind of brought it up to their people, and they were like, we're all in.' You know, it was like if they could produce one piece of art a year or every other year, at Concordia could do the same. That would be that would be that'd be great. So, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, well, hello, Carrie. Welcome." My apologies for being late. I must have moved it to the wrong time on my calendar. 
Oh, that's all right. We're happy that you're here now, and uh, and we're we're just in the thick of a conversation about um, the possibility of a of a sculpture walk of some sort in the future uh, yeah. for Moorhead, and and uh, and we're actually looking for someone to to take it and run with it. So <laughs> thanks for joining. <laughs> okay, excellent. My timing is. <laughs> It's a late entrance, but <laughs> no, that's all right. No, we're, we're just kind of <laughs> on it. <laughs> just in time to not be um, committed to, to chair a subcommittee right. <laughs> making that happen. <laughs> right, there will be a void in your life that you'll you'll need to fill. So uh, it's true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Anyway, we were, we were just talking about, um, you know, some ideas, uh, how there's a little bit of money here, but we also have, um, you know, so, some good examples of uh, successful sculpture uh, walks in other communities and also um, uh, of how it really does mesh with our, our uh, vision that, that was laid out here a few years ago in the, in the plans and also the, the new uh, downtown Moorhead um, plan, and so it really is probably an opportune time to, you know, if there's some way, what do we need to pull together a steering committee, or I mean, is that what what is what is a feasible next step? Do you think on something like this? You know, I think what I've seen is um, excitement from the business community can actually really be a powerful driver because I I never know of artists who are reticent, right, to make art. Um, the artists are always going to be all in when there's a, a project that meets um, the resources and scope that they have. And I think um, the things that Larry was talking about, the fact that we have these university programs, for example, that's just one um, art generating um sort of mechanism that we have in this community to maybe encourage local artists to be doing this work. And um, to me, it seems like one of those things that when there's that, as you know, people are you know, happy to kind of note the public and private partnerships that happen in order to attract, um, you know, visibility or tourism or activity of any kind or to refurbish a, an area of um, of a town that maybe needs some tender, loving care um, after a period of neglect. Those tend to be the kinds of projects that really can have um, the backing and the staying power to, you know, to go ahead and make a sculpture walk truly a walk. Um, as opposed to a couple of spots where people might go and look at something of interest, but actually like get drawn further beyond um, the initial place. So that's one of those things that I think is going to be really important. Um, I think we've seen that with, um, you know, the, the ice sculptures are a really great example. It's a, it's a single festival and a single event that partly because the Moorhead Business Association is excited about it, um, they're, they're able to pull in some of those resources um, that keep that event really exciting and kind of growing year over year. Um, so that's what I've observed, I think, in these kinds of efforts. And obviously, we have plenty of places in town that would be of interest to people to want to spend time there. Um, so the question is really, which area might it serve best to have an attraction uh, like that? Yeah. Any thoughts from uh, from you, Dennis, on this? No, I mean, I, I agree with what everybody's saying. You know, it's just, it's finding that that space and the and the backing to put the sculptures up in the space yeah yeah and and that's going to take some legwork and and some um you know some behind the scenes um networking right 
So again, you know, it kind of comes back to, well, this is great. Let's do it. But how do we do it? And right. You know, what's, what's the next step here? Um, you know, do we, do we try to, I mean, I, I don't think it's probably appropriate for this commission to, to guide this necessarily, um, you know, but perhaps, uh, to, to spark, um, to spark, a, 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 an interest in, in, like you said, another, some other organization or group of individuals that, you know, would be willing to take this on. Um, that have the expertise and the and the time to put together something like this. Hmm. Do we maybe want to, um, you know, put out a call for um, for interested persons to serve, or do we want to, you know, select a, an individual to kind of? To, to sort of spearhead um, an information gathering and uh, you know a, a recommendation from from uh, interested parties or what, what's what's the usual how do we usually go about something like this is there any kind of precedent for that Kim there really isn't right now especially for a project of this magnitude and and I think that's maybe where we need to um, step back and maybe reevaluate, you know, like, is this something that our community would want and wants to stand behind? And then what are those steps, like you said, to collect and find those champions or, or you know, like explore funding options? I, I think this is a, a bigger, more long-term type of project. Um, and, and, and maybe, you know, I don't know if we invite um, some of the, the downtown um, Moorhead Inc. folks um, and see where their next steps are coming from to see if that's where maybe we can get some excitement or um, the MBA like Carrie had suggested. I'm not sure where the next step is for, for projects. Yeah, Larry. I guess I'd be, I'd be curious, you know, to know how the other cities are handling it. You know, I didn't, you know, I got to, if it's there, I didn't read it close enough. And it's like, you know, what does Bemidji do? What does Sioux Falls do? What, you know, what's their framework or how they do it? I mean, why reinvent it when they might, you can copy something and be if they're successful at it. So, and I, and I don't think we, you know, it's, you want to keep the ball going, but it doesn't have to be done next, by next month. You know, it can be, yeah, so we we can we got the time to do it right. Yeah, we do. And I did get a chance to talk with the executive director of Sioux Falls's Sculpture Walk, Sioux Falls, um, and it the the gentleman, the executive director, sounds like he was the one who started it. He does all the fundraising. He does all the art solicitation. He is their champion, um, and he has all those resources. Um, and so. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I, it sounds like he does consulting, so I'm not sure if he's quite available or where that line is of sharing um, how we did it in Sioux Falls, if he'd be willing to, to do a virtual meeting um, to kind of give us his his history or or how we would want to, to do that. But again, that's just one way that community did it is he was their champion and from what it sounded like when I visited with him. Um, Larry, I uh, I can share just a little bit of a background on how um, basically an art park became a part of a downtown redevelopment um, plan in Jamestown. And it was partly because um, there was already an art center there that was in the process of doing some um, it needed to do some renovation of the building. And then suddenly that was like this question of, does it pour out onto the street where other but other businesses would have, would be impacted? And how did they, um, how did they involve the city then in what might happen in that space as opposed to just renovating and, and being done with it, they realized that maybe they had an opportunity to make something bigger that the whole community would be involved in. And they ended up making an art park, but a lot of what they had to do was um, 
to sort of do some of that work that helped the surrounding businesses think about it as their project and what was in it for them to say yes and to say to help explain to the larger community why the money was being raised and how it would benefit everyone, not just the art center. But in that situation, it was coming from a very real need of an arts related business that was in that neighborhood. And so they ended up really being the champion for that. Um, and I think there's sort of um, probably a lot more detail about that process available um, because um, Arts Midwest, some of the staff there um, ended up being being helpful in helping get that project going and kind of keep it going through a couple of important phases. So there's probably a little bit more detail on that um, from Arts Midwest and and some of those folks. but. Um, that's an example that I know of that was successful, partly because um, there was a real and long term need on the part of the art center that was that was in the location. So. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, I would imagine that every every community that has such a thing is has a has a different story, a different path to how they got there, right? Um, so, or they have an individual or a group of people who are really gung ho and just, you know, took it and ran with it and got something right. going. Um, so. My impression is that our, our group will probably have um, an important role to play, I think, in the downtown redevelopment, you know, in the down, new downtown master plan in terms of helping, um, you know, things like this kind of artwork are something that can involve citizens and help them have a sense of ownership and excitement about what some of the aesthetic things are that are happening in the redevelopment. It's one thing to change, you know, orientations of storefronts and things like that to make things more walkable and accessible, which I know is a, a goal of that plan. But I think that's exactly where the goals of our plan intersect is us being one of those places where artists and citizens and other businesses can have a little bit of impact on an input um, into what the aesthetic nature of that that new area is for us to say this is uniquely Moorhead. Um, that's my impression anyway, and that's part of what I'm excited about with the downtown master plan is that there's just lots of opportunity for aesthetic input now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Welcome, Kenyon. Hello, everyone. Sorry about tardiness. I just completely blanked. <laughs> I checked my calendar about 10 minutes ago. And, ah! So it's okay. Apologies. Apologies. Glad, we're glad you're here. Yeah, but what, from what I'm hearing, I mean, this is a great proposal uh, to get something like this moving. I'm really, and this is this is exciting. This is exciting to have something in place. So kind of listening, absorbing where you're at. So mm -hmm. carry on. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, well, I guess, you know, we're, we're sort of, uh, there's, there's no lack of enthusiasm for this, certainly amongst this group. So, um, uh, we're just trying to determine what the next step might be, uh, gather more information, talk to a few individuals about how it may have may have materialized in their communities, and uh, um, you know refer back to the to the uh, conversations that have already been had in Moorhead and the plans that have been already you know uh, have already included um, public art spaces and. Um, and uh you know priority in the community which is you know i mean that's a big piece of it already in my opinion that there's already an acceptance that yes this is important to have as part of our community uh especially now when we have this opportunity to to, to redevelop things um and and i think there is um you know there seems to be any way even during this pandemic time um a, 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 a more of an awareness of of art making in general i think the the whole idea of um you know arts organizations have become very creative in, in the in the last year 
um, to get their get their message out to uh, potential audiences, whether they be the same or or new ones. Um, and there's been, I believe, some, some very creative ways that um, arts organizations have and artists have um, have approached this, um, you know, sort of publicity awareness campaign a public awareness campaign uh, about art in our community and the value that 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 art artists and art and art have uh, to communities of any size and how when, when we're shut out of, of gathering in person um, you know we look to the artists to uh, to find ways to uh, to connect us and still make us feel um, you know whole in that way so you know, so so that so this is this has this so we do have an opportunity, I think, to um, you know say, hey, a lot of people have been talking about th this idea of uh, of more uh, of more publicly accessible art in our community, and and particularly around sculptures because of the, I guess, the durability of of them to be outdoors, and um, you know. Um, that usually the just the magnitude of of that art is is more sometimes uh, provocative for for folks uh, that have that don't have much experience um, experiencing visual art. So, anyhow, um, where should we where should we um, uh, leave this conversation now, or should we should we table this for uh, another time? Should we gather some more uh, input from from other places? What's um, what's your recommendation for um, for next steps here? I think I can see if I can pull together a few more um, resources or places to um, help guide guide the process a little bit and see see if I can explore that a little bit further. Um, so so I think if anybody has any resources or suggestions of things that they've seen in other communities. Uh, send me an email with some information and, and we can connect a little bit more um, to try to build build on for our next meeting. Sounds great. Anybody else have anything to get on the record here about that conversation, that topic? Well, thanks. I think it's good to to talk through these things. It's exciting uh, when, you know, we can be part of of uh, this kind of a conversation. Is there any other um, business that we have here uh, to, to present? Uh, member reports and updates, anything we would like to share um, that's coming up in our world? The Nat already shared an event happening at Concordia this later this week. Yeah, I'll just mention it again for Carrie and Kenyon that we have the Concordia Opera doing a production of Michael Ching's Speed Dating tonight, next Saturday in the afternoon, and it's going to be streamed from our Ustream page. And there's also a talk with him, an interview and Q&A Friday morning at 920 on Zoom webinar, which is linked from the same page that I linked in the chat. So kind of fun. Would you mind sharing the link again? Sure. Thank you. Uh, I just don't think I, I don't know if I have all of the previous chats since I logged on. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, Theater B will have something going on next month um, on the weekend of um, Valentine's. We're doing a role play game live as a show uh, two nights um, on Valentine's weekend. It's called The Quest for Love. And there's some really delightful humor leaning into The Princess Bride in terms of um, the town that has been cursed and people having to find their way out of loneliness and self-obsession and out into the world again to find love. So that's happening uh, Valentine's weekend. And it, it'll be streamed um, Facebook Live uh, like we did um, last spring with our Be At Home episodes. These are uh, basically episodes that were artist choice and we have um, evidently a, a very popular local DM in our company uh, 
who knew? Um, <laughs> evidently, <laughs> other members of our company knew, but it's not something that I tend to do very much. I'm pretty pretty much scripted. Um, so <laughs> uh, anyway, that'll be Valentine's weekend, and people can find info about it at theaterb.org. Cool. cool. <laughs> Well, Tim, I, I was out uh, cross country, and, and I I was down by Woodlawn. As you leave Woodlawn, just west of uh, Park, or those Park Apartments, there's a um, there's a wall there, and it's just full of graffiti. And it's like, you know, if there's if the sculpture walk is kind of a longer term deal, and we got some money to spend, it'd be nice to get the you know, the political things, the graffitis that were on there off. And if somebody could do something, you know, nice. And it's, if you're out there skiing or walking, you can take a look at that and say, hey, maybe this is this is something that would be, we could actually do pretty, in the spring, summer, pretty quick. And you know, get rid of some graffiti and make something nice. Yeah. Great idea. A, a, a deliberate graffiti art graffiti art or something right Perhaps. yes <laughs> there are um there are towns that have um basically uh paired professional graffiti artists with youth graffiti artists to work on public art projects on those big kinds big kinds of flat surfaces that they find around town and it's been actually um, in other cities a really great way to get kids to not vandalize, but to think about their work as art. Um, so I, I know we have some really strong graffiti artists in our community. <laughs> that may well be something to think about with regard to flat spaces, especially since we have so many of those, like you said, um, Larry, those those flat buttresses around the river and around the bridges. And, you know, that's actually a lot of really good art landscape um, if you think about it that way. I, have to say, I wish I could say it's, it's flat, but it's not. It, it goes like this, the middle yeah, side of the, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's not very much art. It's a lot of political statements there right now. So it's like, <laughs> over, so let's move on, you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> I have to say about a week ago, I was trapped at a train crossing at Moorhead and a couple of trains went by. There was two or three of them that were jaw dropping. I mean, just I was reaching for my camera, but they went by too fast type of thing. And uh, even my son dropped his phone and said, those were amazing as he went by, you know, so wow. neat to see that. Kim, I don't know if you mentioned everybody already, but this is my last meeting. Yeah. And uh, Allison, I believe, Coster, Coaster is going to take over for me. So I uh, just want to say thank you, everybody. I guess uh, Carrie and I are the last two of the of the original founders. <laughs> so it's been oh, wonderful. Wow. Thank you all and best of luck. I really, really hope to keep to see this um, group continue to grow and flourish and impact the arts in our community. It's just it's been awesome to see um, from our first meeting where we were like, what do we do and how do we do it to actually seeing things come to fruition. It's been great. and. This uh, sculpture walk sounds like a great uh, continuation of that, as well as all the other initiatives we've worked on over the years, just growing. So good luck, and um, I can't wait to see what happens next. Well, thank you, Kenyon, and also Carrie, for your years of service and dedication thank to you. this uh, commission. Honestly, uh, uh, you have big shoes to fill with anybody that comes <laughs> in, um, both of you. Honestly, um, you're... you're Contributions have been significant uh, to the uh, to this committee and the organization in the community. Um, so, thank you, and we hope to see much more of you as well. Thank you. It has been my pleasure. <laughs> Great. Do we have any further business here today? I just wanted to remind everyone in your packet, there was information on the new comprehensive plan that the city is embarking on. Our kickoff meeting is this Wednesday evening. So cityofmoorhead.com onward Moorhead to share your thoughts and ideas. Okay, we'll do that. All right, um, seeing there's no further business here, uh, we will adjourn today's meeting at 4.58 p.m. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next month. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Yep. Bye-bye.